Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Indiana Jones's son converts to the Catholic Church and credits the Latin Mass as his inspiration. You know, the Mass Pope Francis is currently trying to cancel. Cardinal Roche says traditionalists reject Vatican II, which Pope Benedict XVI said was exploited with disastrous results. Plus, he dresses funny, but this guy is a new Cardinal of the Catholic Church, and he could be the next Pope. Buckle up, kids. You're about to enter the Twilight Zone. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Matt, and this is the Remnant Underground. Quick word of thanks tonight to all of you who watch us on YouTube. YouTube demonetized Remnant TV years and years ago, but just for the fun of it, last month we reapplied for monetization and got this reply back from the YouTube team. Our team carefully reviewed your channel, The Remnant Video. Unfortunately, we found that your application does not meet our YouTube partner program policies, so we cannot approve your channel for monetization at this time. Now, why not? If you do a little clicking, they're helpful at YouTube. They always want to be on your side, of course. Little clicking shows that we, we released some harmful content on the war in Ukraine videos, by the way, which garnered a couple of million views for us at the time, but didn't go over too well with YouTube. YouTube was not happy at all, so they sent us this message. Due to the war in Ukraine, content that exploits, dismisses, or condones the war is ineligible for monetization until further notice. So, I know we live in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. But evidently these days, you're free to hold any opinion that you want, so long as it doesn't deviate from the regime's party line. Now, that's been going on for a long time. I would have thought that we got enough of that in the last century. People like Alexander Solzhenitsyn were writing books about what happened when you deviate from the party line under the Soviet regime, and now we're evidently doing it all over again, and big tech, big tech is helping to enforce all that. So, Remnant TV remains demonetized. And this means, of course, that we can't make any money off of it, but more importantly, it means they have the ability to keep our numbers down because nobody other than our subscribers to this channel who've hit that little bell icon, if you have to hit the bell icon in order to be allowed then to see the dangerous content options of Remnant TV over here on the side, that's how it works. So we're struggling because they're keeping a ceiling on our views. All the more, then, I need to thank you, those of you, our loyal uh, subscriber base, who've really been sending these videos out because the numbers are going back up again, and I know that's due to you because you're liking, you're subscribing to this channel, you're liking, and you're sharing our videos. And the bottom line is, if you don't do it, if you don't do that, if you don't share Remnant TV, nobody at YouTube is going to. So the question is, how long before Remnant TV is just completely deplatformed? The good news, never again. Thanks to you, and thanks to remnant-tv.com. I can't stress this strongly enough. Remnant-tv.com is the answer. That's the future. If we get thrown off YouTube, that's where we're going to be for a long time. They can't touch us over there. Completely independent, privately funded platform. A lot, a lot of time and money and effort in it over the years. Many of you helped us finance that. All we need to do now, it's up and working fine. It's working great. All we need to do is get the word out, and if you can help us obviously finance that and sustain that, click the link down below and, and send us a few bucks. Every bit really, really helps. So thank you. Thanks so much. Speaking of the Ukraine now, you have the war in Ukraine. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar is in the news. Hello, nice to meet you. Now, she's just, a, she's just a senator from flyover land, and an annoying one at that. But many of you may have recognized her. Senate, senator Amy is, this is not her first rodeo. She was famously appearing, making appearance in Ukraine many years ago. We've shown you these clips, along with John McCain and the insufferable Lindsey Graham. Back in December of 2016, if that sounds like a familiar date, it should. It was about a month after Donald Trump was elected president. And she was over there with McCain and, and Lindsey, 
promising a proxy war against Russia. You remember. I admire the fact that you will fight for your homeland. Your fight is our fight. 2017 will be the year of offense. All of us will go back to Washington, and we will push the case against Russia. Remember those Russia collusion charges filed against Donald Trump? Did you think that was just Hillary Clinton? Well, let me ask you this then, uh, because Donald Trump has repeatedly dismissed the assessment of the U.S. Intelligence Committee that Russia, led by Putin, the, the, the dictator and the thug, as you described him, that Russia hacked the U.S. election. Uh, Senator Graham, are you concerned that Trump is in effect siding with a dangerous <laughs> adversary of the United States against his own intelligence agencies? Well, when I heard that uh, President-elect Trump basically uh, dismissed the intelligence. I was very shocked because I've been briefed by the FBI. There's no doubt in my mind that Russia hacked into our political systems. Oh, the FBI gave Lindsey Graham the lowdown on how it is. Uh, well then, that makes total sense. Now remember, this is, this, this is all going on long before you, long before the vast majority of Americans had ever heard now of Mr. Green Tea. 2017 is going to be a year of offense in America. We're going after Putin harder, with tougher sanctions, and we're going to be more helpful to our friends, like here in the Ukraine. Senator McCain led the effort to increase the amount of money we can provide to the Ukrainian military. I hope, as an appropriator, we hit his number and then some. And provide defensive weapons for the Ukrainian military so they can better defend themselves. The Congress will pass new sanctions. I'm convinced of that. Whether President Trump signs them, I don't know. Brave Ukrainians are being killed every single day. I don't think you should have any political voting or constitutional changes until the Russians withdraw their forces. How can you have a free and fair election or debate about the power sharing with the eastern Ukraine when you got 700 Russian tanks? So if you're still standing with Ukraine, I'm sorry, but you're drinking some Kool-Aid now, still. Rhinos and hawks and Democrats, oh my, they're the ones that sold it to you, you see? And they pulled out all the stops to sell it to us. Even the pop music industry got involved, got into the act. You remember this cringe moment? Here to introduce a very special performance led by John Legend is the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. The war. What's more opposite to music? The silence of ruined cities and killed people. Our children draw swooping rockets, not shooting stars. President Zelensky takes to the Grammys stage for freedom in Ukraine. No one can remain silent, tweeted the darling now of the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Um, but it is truly an honor uh, to be here at the Council on Foreign Relations, which has played uh, such a major role in the world for 98 years. Now, you've known all this, but it's interesting to kind of catch up here six months later and ask yourself, what's really going on over there in Eastern Europe? What's it all about? I gotta be careful because this is the kind of stuff that gets videos yanked down. So if that happens, please remember remnant-tv.com. But what's it really all about? What's it really all about? What are they really doing? What's the game here? Well, you know what it is. Well, I should say, you know what it used to be called. Now they're calling it the liberal world order. The liberal world order is now less orderly. Some countries are ignoring the territorial integrity of others, like when Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014 and annexed the Ukrainian territory of Crimea. That leaves the U.S. as the best contender to lead a renewal of the liberal world order by encouraging international coordination. If the U.S. fails to address the challenges facing the liberal world order, it will continue to weaken, and the world will likely become less prosperous, less peaceful, and less democratic once again. <laughs> yes, 
the liberal world order. I don't know if YouTube's got the little warning ban here. Where liberal world order is a conspiracy theory. I'm not sure, but you heard it here first, friends. Davos, the UN, the Vatican, CFR, Rhino, Republicans, Democrats, they're all in on it. And they're just trying to build us a liberal world order where there's going to be lollipops and rainbows all over the place. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> What the world needs now is not love, sweet love. What the world needs now is a liberal world order with a one world religion. And of course, a religion that's headed up by a globalist guru. Now, <laughs> speaking of Pope Francis, his September prayer intention was released yesterday. And it's a lot of fun. Here it is. Recemos para que la pena de muerte que atenta contra la inviolabilidad y dignidad de la persona sea abolida en las leyes de todos los países del mundo. I mean, can you imagine if we actually lived in a world in which the Pope had dedicated September or any other month in 2022 to praying that, oh, I don't know, abortion, which also attacks the dignity of the human person, may be legally abolished in every country. Wouldn't it be great? But you see, he, he isn't. He can't. Bill Gates wouldn't like that. So back in January of 2022, he prayed for, the Pope prayed for true human fraternity. I don't know if he has liberty and equality in there, but he prayed for fraternity. In February, for the religious sisters, which of course is good since he's shutting down the cloisters and getting rid of them, <laughs> the religious life for the most part. In March, it was a, for, he prayed for a Christian response to bio, bioethical challenges. April, he prayed for healthcare workers. Good, good. May was for faith-filled young people. He prayed for faith-filled, more, more faith-filled young people as he's telling the faith-filled traditional Catholic young people to pound sand, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna comment on that right now. June, the Holy Father prayed for families, nice. July was for the elderly, no problem. August, for small businesses, the ones that survived the lockdown that he helped to, to engineer. <laughs> September, he prayed for the abolition of the death penalty, that's this month's. October will be for a Church that is open to everyone, always living in an atmosphere of synodality. November will be for children who suffer, especially the victims of war, but presumably not the victims of the war on the unborn, because it doesn't mention it. And then December will be for volunteer, not-for-profit organizations committed to human development and new paths to international cooperation. I would love to know who's paying any attention to this Pope or, or his sanctimonious, <laughs> cliche-ridden nonsense. But in any case, we went the whole year of 2022, nothing, no, no prayer coming out of Rome for the aborted millions. Well, and those aborted millions would have added to climate change because they would have, you know, added to the whole overpopulation problem that Francis still believes in. We, we got to get rid of this nonsense that we're having an overpopulation issue. We have an underpopulation issue. Why do you think that that's not being said more then? Like I'm pro-environment, but I think the environmentalist agenda yeah, has sure. kind of gone too yeah. far. On so, but I'm not going to crepe hang. I'm not going to get angry at him. I get it. He's a busy guy getting a little older. Really busy guy. I mean, he spent much of 2022, for example, <laughs> attacking traditional Catholic people and finding ways to dismantle the Latin mass movement, uh, which is com comprised, obviously, a large family with lots and lots of little babies being born well, throughout 2022 and every other year. This is the problem of today, of many who say traditional. They are not traditional. They are indietristi. And the indietrism is a sin, because it doesn't go forward with the church. Isn't that sweet? The old Francis, the great unifier. <laughs> Just laying into everybody, attacking everyone who disagrees with him. This holy man does that. That's it. That's him. That's how he works. In fact, it's sort of like that other bitter old guy who's out there running his mouth all the time. Yeah, it's like Joe Biden. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. 
Now, Pope Francis is also busy with trying to, trying to pack the court, if you will, uh, the Curia. He announced 21 new cardinals last week, unprecedented, kind of goes against church law as well, but who's counting? He's literally stacking the deck for the next conclave, again, just like Biden packing the court, the Supreme Court. And one of those new cardinals, by the way, is Big Bob McElroy of San Diego. Here's Bob. It's great to be here with you today. Now, aside from being a pretty snappy dresser, Big Bob McElroy is arguably the most pro-homosexual left-wing prelate in the United States of America at this time. <laughs> he celebrates LGBT masses, is a huge fan of Father Jimmy Martin. He challenges the church's position on homosexual acts, right? He supports communion to pro-abort politicians. He equates abortion with climate change. You can get that video online. I just saw it myself. And he pushes, of course, vaccination as the only pathway back to normalcy from COVID. So he's a big vax guy. This is the caliber. The guy in the cool shirt. Put it back up here for a second so you can really take it in. There he is. That's him. He's a cardinal now of the Catholic Church. And personally, I just see the hand of God. It is such a great thing that Francis's radical new cardinals, the whole story of that, creating these new cardinals, was completely eclipsed in the media by something called Shia LaBeouf. Is that how you pronounce his name? I think so. LaBeouf, okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what? Walter, he is. He's, he's Indiana Jones' kid, remember? <laughs> Pretty cool. There's a difference between, you know, what you see in the movie instead of reality. Absolutely not. He's his kid. And uh, I didn't see that particular uh, Indiana Jones vehicle, but it's kind of cool. He's Here this kid is acting with Harrison Ford, a, a Steven Spielberg movie. I don't know if the movie's any good or not, but it's a blockbuster deal. And that's why the story of this guy becoming a Catholic is completely eclipsed whatever the heck the octogenarian hippies are doing over in the Vatican. Because not only did Shia become a Catholic, but he, <laughs> praise God, he credits his conversion to the traditional Catholic faith to the traditional Latin Mass. You know, the one that Francis is trying to abolish. Latin Mass affects me deeply, deeply. And, How and come? Because it feels like they're not selling me a car. Hmm. And when I go to some mass with the guitars and stuff, yeah. and I'm from, you know, Santa Inez, right? So that's where I was catechized. And there's a lot of guitar playing. And there's a lot of like what feels like, um, like they're trying to sell me on an idea. Whoa. Mass has changed because there was a yearning to activate the public hmm. in an artificial way. And I would say, I mean, listen, I'm not no expert on any of this, but it feels like this bureaucratic activation we have full conscious active participation. That's Which the, is where the, the singing and the back and, and forth comes right. from. Whereas old Latin mass put all the agency on the priest to be fully activated. So naturally the head of the Vatican's liturgy office, he's really worried about Indiana Jones's kid. I mean, he's very concerned. That's a huge news story. So during an August 27th interview in the tablet magazine in UK, the new cardinal now, Arthur Roche, said he would... Uh, Welcome a conversation with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I'll bet he would. Isn't it weird to think about this? Some kid, some actor out in Hollywood is so much more influential than a new cardinal of the Catholic Church. He's squandered it all. It doesn't matter. So the cardinal, his eminence, would like to have a little conversation with this guy because obviously this actor is a much bigger deal as far as the vast majority of inhabitants of planet Earth are concerned at the moment. That's what they've done with the Catholic Church. Nobody cares about these guys. So he wants to have a conversation with Indiana Jones, his kid. Now, Roche, by the way, is one of the new cardinals that Francis just appointed, and he's been leading the charge to eradicate the traditional Latin Mass. So this is all absolutely perfect. And he insists in this interview, which I guess we'll put a link below to the tablet inter interview, he insists that the new Mass, you know, that's the Mass, and that's celebrated with great dignity and, and everything, too, he says in the interview. Well, obviously, your, your newly eminence. <laughs> and here's a good example of the Novus Ordo's cringeworthy dignity.
Yikes. I mean, what is that? What's going on there? That's celebrant, and that tango mass is one Archbishop Jorge Mario Bergoglio. That's your future pope watching the tango mass. Now, Cardinal Roche continues in his interview. He said that he believes much of the traditional Catholic resistance to France is very bad, bad, bad stuff. Much of that resistance is rooted in opposition to the reforms of the Second Vatican Council, don't you see? Or maybe it's just that we don't like tangos at Mass. I'm not sure, uh, Eminence, what you're referring to. But I will say this, uh, Cardinal Roche, at least we know what Vatican II was. I mean, I, 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 you do realize that most Catholics today have never even heard of it. Couldn't possibly care any less about Vatican II. I mean, you realize that, right? Like your traditional Catholics, you're always ripping on. We're the only ones that even know what it is. Most Catholics think Vatican II is probably like the Pope's summer residence. You know, Vatican II, right? <laughs> but here, I'll play along with, with you, Cardinal Roche. Which council exactly? Are we evil, backwardist, traditionalists rejecting, in your opinion? Which, which council is it? The one that, that hasn't been realized yet? You know, that y'all are unpacking the bags for Vatican II, still you're going to get to, they're getting them all unpacked, maybe in a couple more decades or whatever it is you're doing. That, con that, that Vatican II? Are we rejecting that one? Or are we rejecting the Vatican II that Pope Benedict XVI was talking about when he said this council of the media was responsible for trivializing the liturgy and pretty much wrecking the whole church. Or is, is that the council that we are rejecting? You remember when Benedict said this. This council created many calamities, so many problems, so much misery in reality. Seminaries closed, convents closed, the liturgy was banalized. And the true council has struggled to materialize, to be realized. The virtual council was stronger than the real council. You know, it's our job to pay attention to all this stuff. I can only imagine what most guys in the pews are, are, are doing right now with all this. What, what, what? what now? There's, there's a real council that failed to materialize, according to the Pope, the last Pope who's running around in white still, by the way, I'm not sure why. And then there's a council of the media that did really damaging thing, but the council of the media, that's the only council that anybody really, really understands because that's the one that, that everybody in the whole world got. And that one destroyed the mass, trivialized the liturgy, shut down the seminaries. And and then there's the spirit of the Vatican Council, which nobody knows what that is. Is that like an actual demonic entity? Is it a good thing? Is it, nobody knows. Now, is it okay for us then, for traditional Catholics, to reject that horrible, disastrous dumpster fire council that Pope Benedict was targeting? This council created many calamities, so many problems, so much misery in reality. Seminaries closed, convents closed, the liturgy was banalized. Vatican II, the Woodstock of these guys. Joe Cocker is up there. Oh, man, everybody was there. It was awesome. But we don't care. Even somebody as old as me. When Vatican II ended, I wasn't even born yet. It's ancient history. There is nothing in Vatican II that's doctrinally binding for anybody. And whatever is doctrinally binding, because it reiterates already established teachings of the church, we all accept. In fact, we accept more of the doctrinally binding parts that happen to find their way into that council than Jimmy Martin does, and most of the goofballs that Francis just made cardinal. Vatican II, Cardinal Roche? Really? You're still going on about this? Who cares about Vatican II? Why don't you tell us which doctrines of the church we're rejecting in the council. Friends, you can use this with your priests, with your bishops, with your friends, your neo-Catholic. It, they absolutely have no answer. You say to them, which dogmas of the Catholic Church are we rejecting in Vatican II? Please, we're waiting, we're listening, we're discerning, we're being synodality people. They have no answer. We're not rejecting any dogmas in Vatican II. It's the crazy Woodstock spirit of Vatican II that wrecked the Mass, as Benedict XVI admitted, that we reject. Seminaries closed, convents closed, the liturgy was banalized. 
Is it okay if we say that? Your new eminence, your holiness? Are you going to excommunicate us now for saying that? <laughs> what are you going to excommunicate us from exactly? Uh, your ring of pedophiles that everybody hears about? Is that it? Your Vatican orgies? move on it a criminal prosecutor in Argentina has requested the arrest of Bishop Gustavo Zancheta now you'll remember he was accused of sexually abusing two seminarians Zancheta was suspended from his position at the Vatican Bank where he was appointed an assessor by Pope Francis in 2017 now Zancheta is currently living at the Casa Santa Marta the where the whole Holy Father resides a predator who's now been thrown in prison enjoying cover, hiding from the law with the help of the Pope. And they're accusing us of being divisive. I mean, no wonder 70 million Catholics or there about in America today have simply left the Catholic Church in disgust. As these are the guys running the show. When they're not in prison. Out of 88 million Catholics in the United States of America today, roughly 17 million will admit that they bother to attend Sunday Mass. That's an obligatory Mass. Used to be. When I was in Catholic school, we were taught it was a mortal sin to skip Mass. Right? The vast majority of Catholics today have totally rejected the new Mass. In other words, Cardinal Roche. Pope Francis, are you aware of this? The vast majority of Catholics have rejected that mass <laughs> and they surely don't give one flying fig about Vatican II. And why is that? It's because the most divisive force in the Catholic Church today, the most divisive force, are, are the guys running the Vatican right now with their endless scandals, their trivialized liturgy, as Pope Benedict XVI called it, as Joseph Ratzinger, he called the new mass, a banal, on-the-spot product. We'll put that up on the screen. Well, that's what we're supposed to become a part of, according to Francis, Roche, and all these guys, in order to be unified. Unified with what? With the millions who no longer go to mass at all, with the millions who've already rejected that mass? The millions who've left the faith, lost the faith? They want us to go down the same rabbit hole, the same trail that leads to apostasy and to sleeping in on Sunday mornings? Millions and millions of Catholics have left. They're gone. They've left the church because the Roman rite that we're supposed to take our children to has become the plaything play now of lunatics. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless us today, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass never ends. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. You want me to take my kids to that Mass, Cardinal Roche? <laughs> It'll be a cold day in hell. Traditional Latin Mass doesn't cause division, and you know it. But the Novus Ordo Missae certainly does. It's driven millions out of the church. And according to you guys, Cardinal Roche, we're the problem now. We're the bad guys. The ones who, for some reason, have hung on, stayed in the church, mostly because of traditional Catholic priests who have brought us the traditional Catholic sacraments of the faith of our fathers. We're the bad guys. And Roche says in that tablet interview, the Vatican II reform is taking place, uh, but it's a slow process because there are those who are dragging their feet and stubbornly opposing what the council has actually decreed. Blah, de blah, de blah, de blah. That thing again. 
And what has the church actually decreed? Eminence? What has it decreed? Because mostly what we see now are just sexual predators getting a pass as long as they wear Roman collars, right? But you see, ladies and gentlemen, for guys like Roche, for guys like Francis, Vatican II can be whatever they want it to be because it's not clearly defined anymore what they're even talking about. It's what the spirit of Vatican II is all about. That's what they want us to accept. And so Roche in his tablet interview says, after two world wars, remember that, after two world wars, which had been initiated in the heart of Christian Europe, it was obvious that there needed to be an enormous reform within the church, <laughs> says Roche. The two world wars, remember, that caused Vatican II to become very nasty. He's just, he's just making stuff up now. Everybody knows that Pope John Paul, John the 23rd, who called the council, remember, I think you guys have canonized him now. God knows why, although he certainly is a far improvement over what we got now. But Pope John the 23rd opened the Second Vatican account Council officially. Look it up. We'll link it below by insisting in his address, opening the council, that the council was not intended to focus on any errors. <laughs> Cardinal Roche, much less two world wars. The Pope doesn't mention your two world wars. But he says, the Pope says, Pope John XXIII says, rather the council was for the purpose of letting in fresh breezes through the windows to the world that he had thrown open to the world. You see? He's condemning people like Roche who were saying there were all these problems and wars and the churches had to do something. He calls them prophets of doom. He says, don't listen to them. Everything's great. We have no heresy. We have no problem. We're starting the council just to share the joy. <laughs> That's what the Pope said. Quote, divine providence is guiding the church today towards a new order in human relations, wherein by men's own efforts and even beyond their greatest expectations, the superior and inscrutable designs of God's will are being fulfilled, end quote. So says the Pope who called the Second Vatican Council. So why is Cardinal Roche revising history here? Why is he lying about this? Because for one thing, the Latin mass is being suppressed by Francis the globalist because Francis is a globalist and the Latin mass is the touchstone of the old world order founded by Jesus Christ. They're trying to found a new world, or I'm sorry, a liberal world order. That's what they're trying to do, but it is new. And they know, and they've known for a long time, kill that greatest unifying force in Christendom, the Latin mass, which united every Catholic and every continent, no matter what language they speak, that was the greatest unifying factor in the history of the world. Kill that mass and you, and you kill the church. Get rid of tradition and there's nothing standing in the way of the liberal world order that Francis is helping to build. You see, that's what this is all about. But it's very serious. It's a very serious matter, says Cardinal Roche. In the end, people have to ask themselves, am I really Catholic or am I more Protestant? Says the English Roche, the guy who actually takes part in Protestant liturgies. Bottom line is this, Cardinal Roche, Pope Francis, Stand with Vatican II, I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. We have no idea what you're talking about anymore. We, we stand with Christ because there's safety there and security there. We stand with the cross. We're, we're putting our arms around the base of the cross and hanging on while you're all trying to knock it down. So no, we stand with Christ. We don't stand with the new mass. You know, the one that's been rejected by 70 million Catholics just recently, and not talking all the way back 50 years, just presently, it's rejected by 70 million people who, who claim to be Catholics. So no, like, like Shia LaBeouf, we stand with the mass of Padre Pio and every saint and every pope back to Peter himself. That's what we're standing with. What are you standing with? What novelty are you standing with that's driving so many people out of the church and why are you standing with it? Now that's where we stand with the mass of tradition. And if standing with Christ, Standing with the cross, standing with the mass of Padre Pio, that makes us enemies of Vatican II. <sighs> I'm sorry, but to hell with Vatican II. <laughs> That's where we're at. 
your eminence. And that's where we're gonna stay. We have no right before God or history to expose our children to the church that you've devised, the church of accompaniment, which has now caused millions to lose the faith. To stand with Vatican II? No, well, thank you very much. But long live Christ the King. That's where we stand. I'm Michael Matt for Remnant TV. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.